Today in the closet, I am with Peter Mathias. Hello. Hello. TV presenter, TV producer, chef, gastronomic tour guide, yeah. writer, who burst onto our screens in full technicolour <laughs> in um, Taste New Zealand. Yeah, 2000. And... No, it was 1995. Right. And your outfits were just fabulous, and she charmed her way into people's kitchens and into people's hearts wearing the most amazing outfits. That was such a good time. It was wonderful. I always remember the photo of you with a plow and yes. a beanbag. Yes, and then, oh my goodness, you've got a good memory. That was all. That that was all staged. You know, as soon as my producers saw the way I was dressed. They said, right, we're going to exaggerate this. You know, that was all deliberate. You know, the fact that I'd be on a fishing boat dressed in a ball gown, that was all deliberate. That, you know, I obviously don't normally dress like that. And so, yes, it's, I remember that handbag thing. That and was really funny. And it just was so out here. But also your clothes for New Zealanders who are, um, tend to be a little shy of colour. Yes. Your clothes. And shy in good. general. Yeah. Yeah. Your clothes took us to another world. Yeah. Well, I, I was probably influenced a lot by living in uh, Europe for 10 years. You know, I lived in France for 10 years, and I learned a lot about dressing. The way I dressed changed dramatically when I moved to France. Um, I, got, I got my a, a lot of help and influence from the way French women dressed, and my French boyfriends were very chic. And unlike New Zealand men, they had an opinion on what you were wearing. And so they infer and they, and they showed me designers that they thought were wonderful. And but not in a controlling way, in a nice way, because I was still dressing like a hippie in those days. Yeah. Yes, that was, you know, nineteen eighty. I had a French partner for a while. And I remember having the argument with him over where the vase of flowers was put on the heart. And in frustration I said to him, you don't have to care about everything so much. You don't have to be passionate about everything. I can imagine him saying, you're not going to put it there, are you? He did. He said, don't put it there. It's so obvious. Yes. Yeah. You're not going to wear that, are you? <laughs> you can't wear that colour with that colour. Because this is just like being a traffic light. Well, it's like, it's <laughs> like candy, isn't it? It's but, you know, this sort of thing is just absolutely heavenly because it's, it's really... Beautiful colours, but not loud, not in your face, you know, beautifully subtle. And it's this is Izumiyaki, and it's a whole scene, you know, it's a street scene in China. It's just absolutely amazing. Or maybe Japan, because he's a Japanese mm. designer. But this guy, he's got his headphones on. Oh, yeah. He always does something a little bit wild and crazy. And then you, when you put this on, it, the neck folds over and you get this lovely gorgeous kind of collar thing that happens and then you can wear you know pants under it like this he does wild things that look like cowboy pants too oh my goodness with the that. tassels isn't that wild and this one is a zemiaki and look the thing that's brilliant is that they're all folded they're so complicated they do all these and it's just it's, a how, it's just it's all one piece of fabric that he has folded and tied together and done little tucks here and there so that it just mm -hmm. folds where it's meant to fold. And then it's got the little wee beautiful little oh, buttons. Some tiny little button there. Yeah, like little berries. Mm -hmm. So adorable. So those are the Izumiyaki ones. Oh my goodness. I've never seen so much Izumiyaki in one. Surprise. But the thing is that they're so valuable and they're so well made. I mean, they're collector's pieces. They're works of art. So you... You know, people say, oh, but you should have, you should sell them. No. No, I'm going to be the best dressed old lady in the rest home. I'm going to wear them till I die. And why would And they're they indestructible. They're still in perfect condition. Yeah. You know, look at this. And they're not, thing. and they're not, um, you know, that trend so thing. You know, that they, they defy trends. Yes. Yeah. And that's what's brilliant about um, recycling clothes or repurposing clothes is that if you buy intelligently, you can wear them mm. forever. So, in fact, you're doing the planet a favour as well as yourself financially. 
Yeah, well, that, you know, as we were saying before, that whole false economy around buying electric Do you orange see? trousers, per chance. Aren't they outrageous? I don't think that's something I could ever see myself wearing. And do you know what? There's a dress that goes with that, but it's in Uzaz. So normally I would wear a bright orange dress exactly the same as this with these pants underneath. And you just, I mean, you don't need fog lights, you don't need <laughs> traffic lights, you don't need anything. So when you dress in France, do you, are you a different dresser in France? A bit different because it's very, very hot. I mean, where I live in the south of France, it gets up to 40 degrees in summer. So you you couldn't possibly wear this. This mm. is autumn and winter. Mm. You couldn't possibly wear this because it's all synthetic. So you wear things that um, mostly are cotton yeah. in the south of France. And you tend to wear paler colours. You know, like you wear a lot of white and cream and kind of dove. Cooling. cream, cool calm colors yes. yeah yeah ah, interesting yeah the, um and what about fine linens because you know italy they wear a lot of those really fine linens for that they, they wear linen age. yeah the thing is in very hot countries you have to wear something that will breathe mm -hmm. and i always used to think silk would be a really intelligent thing to wear but in fact silk doesn't breathe as well as cotton and linen mm -hmm. do you can actually get quite hot from silk and in Asian countries they quite often make their underwear out of silk because it keeps you warm. Mm. Well this is silk and people do wear silk as a, I was out for dinner the other night and um, a German woman there had a beautiful beautiful silk scarf that she used for travelling because it keeps you warm. Really and she'll light. use it as a shawl or she'll use it, tie your hair up with it. Yeah. yeah. Of course this kind of stuff is brilliant for travelling because you don't iron it. Yeah. How you store it is you... You twist it and you tie it into a ball and that's how it sits in your wardrobe. You never hang it up. And so in a suitcase, you can imagine how divine it is. You, know, you just get it out and it looks exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How fabulous. Oh, that's perfect for some housekeepers, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. No, it's so fond of ironing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm the only person in the world who actually likes ironing. It's a kind of therapy for me. It's like a meditation. I love just getting rid of all those creases and it's it's like you're getting rid of the creases in your life and and everything is smooth and beautiful and perfect again. And in the smell world. of cotton? I don't feel oh smell of cotton. I don't feel the same way about housework. I don't like housework. But ironing I do love because it's calm and it's repetitive. And you get something beautiful at the end. And I'll offer to iron people. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm very speedy and very driven. So to, to stop and do something like ironing is really good for someone like me. Yeah. Mum, my mother used to iron, and she had six children. Well, so and she so iron. And, and, and I she think ironed it was everything like away from from us. She'd be just. Yeah, anyway, possibly, yeah. Disconnecting. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, there, weren't, there wasn't a lot of synthetic clothing in those days. Everything had to be ironed. Yeah. My mother even had a rolling thing and she ironed the sheets for eight people. I know, incredible, eh? Do you iron your sheets now? Are you kidding? I, I would actually, if I could be bothered, I would take my sheets to a laundry and have them done and ironed. But I kind of like the ruffled look, the deconstructed look a little bit, not too perfect, not, not too obsessive. And when you take them off the line. Oh, that smell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So wonderful, yeah, yeah. So have you always loved fabrics? Yes, my mother was a sewer and she taught me to sew and she made most of our clothes. I made all my own clothes and I can still make my own clothes, but I don't do it anymore. Uh, when I was young but you know girls can't sew now boys can't sew mm. either um, but it was a pleasure to me and I always loved fabric and my mother had a beautiful sense of color and she was always very chic and very um, beautifully dressed and so I got that from her and it's just in my mind it's a cheap way to make yourself happy 
by eating good food is a cheap, affordable way of making yourself happy. Not everybody can afford to take a holiday to Paris, but they can afford to wear a beautiful dress or eat a beautiful French meal. And it just makes you happy. Because, mm. you know, life is hard. Life is hard for everybody. So incidental happiness is... Grabbing is, the little moment. Grab yes. the moments, you know, live in the present. Yeah. Because you do, you did tours, do you do textile tours? You well, do the always, red, yeah. gastronomic tours, but there's a... Yeah. Well, there's tour? always textiles involved in the tours, and my clients forced me into that. Because at first, because I've been doing these tours for about 15 years, and at first it was just gastronomy. That's it. If you want to go on some other kind of tour, go with someone else. This is about food. And then, you know... Year after year, they would beg me and say, oh, we know that you know where to shop. Please take us on a shopping trip. And so I've had to include that in the tour. So we do textiles and, uh, you know, just like an afternoon or something, or we'll, we'll do a shopping, an afternoon shopping tour, and I'll take everybody to the best shops, including menswear shops, of course, because I have men on the tour as well. But in India in particular and in Vietnam, I take them to, um, we do... A block hand block printing workshops mm -hmm. where we make a scarf and you can take it away with you and people learn the mm -hmm. techniques and they learn you know why these things are so beautiful and and why they're so expensive because of the work that goes into them we learn tie-dyeing tie-dyeing is an incredibly complicated long-winded process and if you do it a very refined tie-dye it's, it's an amazing work of art because you sort of think of tie dyeing as being very hippie. But when you go to India, where it all, well, actually it started in Persia, but the Indians took it over when the Persians came into India in the 15th century. And so all these arty, crafty things people are very interested in. And so we do do that, and I take them to my favorite shops.